Welcome to my channel, The Binge Eating Therapist. I'm Sarah, former binge eater turned psychotherapist, and my mission is to use this space to bring content to you to help you understand your struggle with food and break free from binge eating. I get a number of questions asking me to talk about emotional eating, and it's a pretty big subject. So this is just a condensed video of five tips or five things for you to consider if you believe that emotional eating is a problem for you. And I've turned them into an acronym, LILAC, because acronyms are fun and LILACs are nice, and also to help you remember it. And I would want to begin by saying I'm not somebody who demonizes emotional eating. I think it's very difficult to, to remove how we feel from decisions that we make around food. Because if you think about it, even hunger is a feeling, like it's a sensation in the body, so therefore it can become very confused when there's a lot of other emotions going on as well. And if you feel hungry and you eat something, you feel better. So often there is this emotional payoff to eating, which is just part of the eating experience as a human being. That said, if you're watching this video, chances are for you, you feel like emotional eating has become a real problem for you. And emotional eating can become a problem in and of itself. But I don't think that the goal is to eradicate all emotional eating. That's what the all or nothing thinking will try and get you to do. And that may lead to more problems down the line because you're likely to get a rebound effect if you're trying to tightly control your food. So the first thing I would urge you to consider is look at where you are layering judgment on your emotional eating. What I see over and over again with people who tell me they struggle with emotional eating is they carry this belief that they are just somebody who doesn't cope with their emotions as well as someone who doesn't turn to food. I don't think that's true. We do not know how other people are coping with their emotions. We also don't know how other people are experiencing their emotions. It might be um, that you're a highly sensitive person. It might be that you're someone who's very empathic and you absorb the emotions of other people. Particularly if you're someone who spends a lot of time people pleasing or looking after other people, chances are the emotions that you are carrying are not just your own, you're absorbing other people's emotions. So therefore it may be even more important or feel more urgent for you to have some kind of outlet. And when we judge ourselves, we make ourselves wrong. You create a load of shame around the subject. You will have a whole story about what it means that you struggle with emotional eating. And that story is likely to be increasing your negative and complicated feelings around food. And when I say negative feelings, I mean feelings that don't feel good. I don't necessarily believe that emotions are positive or negative. So before we can really explore what might be going on for us when it comes to food and this emotional eating, we need to notice what's the story that we're telling ourselves. And because the minute you start judging yourself, you lose the capacity for curiosity to see anything else because you're saying the reason why I emotionally eat is fill in the gap. Notice what your brain did, how it ended that sentence. Chances are what you are judging yourself to be because of your emotional eating is part of what keeps you stuck in the same cycles of behavior. Letting go of judgment is not telling yourself that something is okay when it doesn't feel okay, but it's that you are still okay even if you are engaging in a behavior that doesn't feel okay. And so the next thing I'd like you to consider is are there emotions that are coming up again and again for you and it seems to be a very specific emotion or one emotion way more than any other emotions that sends you running to the food. So the emotion could be stress. The emotion might be loneliness or boredom. If it's the same feeling that's coming up again and again, chances are that feeling is trying to get your attention. So what I'm asking you to consider is, are you ignoring something? Is there a niggling thing that's going on in your life that you are just not willing to look at at this time? So no, 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 let me just fix my body and the food before I look at the fact my marriage is falling apart or that this job I'm doing is unsustainable. I'm not saying it's as easy as finding the root of the problem and just fixing it, but sometimes we do need to think, is there something that needs to change? Because our emotions are trying to get our attention for a reason a lot of times. And if it's coming up repeatedly, there is something that's demanding your attention. 
And if food is a way that you're playing out and avoiding that, putting your attention on this problem and whatever it is that you don't want to look at may help to smooth out your emotional eating. And then the third point. So I think emotional eating is a natural part of being a human being. But there is a line. This is more of a, a question to ask yourself, a self-reflection on where is the line where this becomes a problem for me? So if you've had this emotional eating episode and by the end of it, like maybe it felt like a binge and maybe you don't feel good at all, just rewinding back through your mind, like at what point did it feel like it was serving you? And at what point did it feel harmful? And there's a caveat to this one because you will not get it right every time. Sometimes we don't learn where our line is until we've already crossed it. And then maybe we're in the realms of compulsive eating. But it's a way of trying to understand where the middle ground is. Because if you're going into this with the idea that I have to stamp out all emotional eating and only use food for fuel, you're likely to create some conflict and some tension around that. Because when we genuinely become curious about what might be the payoff to something, like genuinely curious, rather than just telling ourselves we shouldn't do that thing again, then we're more likely to come up with new perspectives and a bit more clarity of thought. So this one is potentially a journaling question. Where is the line? The line where this becomes a problem. And the fourth thing is probably going to help you out with that last one a bit, is we really want to acknowledge what the emotions are. And I say emotions plural because chances are there may be a few going on in the moment. Because what often happens when there's, when emotional eating is something you do regularly, it could be that there's like a nagging feeling trying to get your attention and you don't even register that there's an emotion there. All you experience is a strong desire for this food. So this is something that's happened to me many times where I will have a very sudden urgent thought and want for a particular food and so if I check in with myself in those moments go hmm, what's going on for me I then start to notice other things other emotions but it's not until I check in and then when I check in and I can realize oh okay like I really want this particular food because I'm feeling lonely or I'm feeling bored now that doesn't mean then oh I mustn't go and have the food but when you acknowledge the feeling, there's something that shifts in me because when the feeling's not acknowledged, the food becomes an escape. So I don't wanna go anywhere near the feeling, so I go straight to the food. When we acknowledge the feeling, we allow the feeling to come up and be heard. And I would also like to add on to acknowledge is accept. And this isn't necessarily saying accepting that you feel fine about this feeling, but it's about not judging yourself for the feeling it's, it's allowing, maybe allowing is a better word than accept. But what this does is it gives your emotions the opportunity to do their job. And their job is to get your attention and say, I think something's going on over here, you might need to pay attention to it. So if we can acknowledge the feeling, and, and I'm not a big fan, if you've been watching my videos for a while, you might know this, I'm not a fan of the term sitting with your emotions. Sometimes I find if I notice a feeling, I acknowledge it, I allow it and I kind of recognize what it might be. Because I've allowed it in, it dissipates. And sometimes it doesn't. And the times when it doesn't, if I were to just sit there with that feeling, what could happen is my mind could start spinning stories about that feeling. I think I'm doing the right thing by sitting with my feelings, but actually all that's happening is my mind is spiraling round and round and round because it's making all these stories about the feeling, which is fueling the feeling and making it bigger and bigger. And now I'm playing out all these scenarios in my mind and feeling even worse. So we acknowledge and accept and allow, sometimes the feeling will dissipate, sometimes it won't. And when it doesn't, it moves on to the next bit, is change your energy. So emotions, their sensations, their energy moving through the body. So accept and allow, and then go and do something. And that something might be eating or that something might be just doing something active. It might be doing an errand or a chore, but there's something around changing. For me, especially like when I spend a lot of time sitting, my emotions are harder to deal with. And that doesn't mean you have to jump up and rush to the gym or 
get on the floor and start doing crunches or anything like that. But there's something about moving and having a task to occupy yourself. It's not the same as escape because you have acknowledged and allowed and investigated the feeling, you've checked it out. It's been heard, it's been able to do its job. And eating also changes our energy. And I think that's why it's such a compelling possibility in that moment is to eat. And so there are times when I'm not feeling great and I will eat and I will feel better, which is very different to back when I was, this was a real problem for me and it was mixed in with the binge eating, was that I would eat and eat and eat and feel worse. That's the difference. And that's where we are when we're trying to explore where that line is. And when we're not in a conflict or a fight with ourselves or our emotions, the compulsive eating reduces. Because you might think with that line one, well, it's all very well telling me where that line is, but once I start eating, I'm in compulsion. But when you like combine it with the other steps where you're not judging yourself, you are checking in with your feelings and you're making some choices about how to change your energy that might just help to reduce down the compulsiveness. Not if you're restricting. And just one other point that's not part of lilac, but one other point, of course, that's gotta be mentioned, is that if you are restricting and fighting with food, you are gonna create more emotions around food. And if this is the case for you, it's not emotional eating that's your problem, it's your emotions around your eating that are tripping you up. So in conclusion, as a quick reference, we have layering judgment. Gotta watch out for that. Are you ignoring something? Think about the line. Where do you cross that line where this becomes a real problem for you? Notice your feelings, acknowledge your feelings, accept them, allow them, and then change your energy. And sometimes that might be with food, but having other ways to change your energy as well will help give you some more options. So it isn't always the food that calls your name. Anyway, I hope that was useful and I will see you on the next video.